This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Jim Schaller. Welcome, good neighbors, to episode number 39 of the Good Neighbor Podcast, Estero. Today, we have good neighbor Nancy Martin from Interfaith Charities of South Lee. Nancy, welcome. Good morning. So why don't we jump right in and why don't we learn a little bit more about what Interfaith Charities of South Lee does around around here? Okay. Um, Interfaith Charities was started in 92 by a uh, group of churches in the area. They had been, each church had a small piece of the picture. One church had a food pantry. Another one had um, respite care. They can come into your home. So, um, that the caretaker could go out. They did transportation to doctors. So people were having to go from church to church to get all their um, the services they were looking for. So they decided that they would go ahead, pool all their money together and have one agency that represented the churches in the area. And since then, you know, the area has expanded. The churches are not our only supporter anymore. It's really the entire community. Um, that's great. So, that's great. So you're doing a lot of good things for the community as it grows. You guys are growing and, and that's, that's, that's wonderful. So how did you get involved in, into this originally? Uh, kind of by accident. Um, I was working at a local church part time doing uh, um, helping with the youth group. And I had two girls that were getting ready to go to college and I decided I needed a little bit more money. So uh The job here was available, and my pastor said, you know, I have the perfect job for you. I thought he was crazy. So I started, and he said, give it 30 days. And I think I called him at least three times every week telling him, Reverend Ray, I cannot do this. This is not me. I don't know old people. I don't know how to talk to them. Um, (laughs) I know kids. And he insisted I stayed the 30 days, and by the end of 30 days, I was kind of hooked. So... So I've been here now for 22 years. Wow. Yeah. That's, a, that's amazing. So, you, so you've seen a lot of growth and a lot of change through the years, I'm sure. Yes, a lot. Our services have totally um, morphed from the beginning to what we have now, which is very expansive as far as food and financial assistance. And we also have other programs that we work with United Way to bring into our location as well. Very nice. And, and I'm sure, you know, uh, through through the journey, there's been some some challenges to, to get where you are today. Has has there been some that's maybe helped define or get you, you're, I want to say you're in a better place because of it? Uh, personally, yes. Um, I I can relate to my clients. Um, when I we were young, I had children, obviously, um, and a mortgage and a car payment and paycheck, you know, just barely stretches. So I actually had to go through the same thing that a lot of my clients do. And it makes it a lot easier to empathize with their situation and help provide solutions to to their issues as well. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. When you've experienced it and you've, you've gone through it, they, they like you said, they, they relate to you better because you've actually been in their shoes and that's, that, that, that's, you know, it's it's unfortunate that that's that's what happened, but on the other hand, it, it's it helps those other people realize they're not alone. It's not just them. Mm-hmm. Now, are there any myths or, or maybe misconceptions uh, involved or surrounding what you guys what you guys do that we could maybe bust for our listeners? Sure. Um, the biggest misconception is people assume that the food pantry is only for very poor people for people on government assistance, you know, that they're the only ones that qualify. For our food pantry, there is no financial requirement. You can live um, in our service area, which is south of Gladiolus Road, down to Coconut Road Estero. We don't ask income. We don't ask a lot of the more invasive questions that a lot do. And the truth is most of our clients are working. And Everyone knows what's going on right now. You know, the rents have gone up. Food is outrageous. Utilities are getting more expensive. So what our idea is, if we can help lower your grocery bill, you can pay your electric bill. Or if we help pay your electric bill, you can make your mortgage this month. So 
Um, but it is a misconception that only really poor people need help. The rest of us need help too. And you know, this this group that's in the middle, um, they are um, becoming larger and larger. Um, that what we're serving more of those now than before. Yeah, because there's a lot of people out there that are you know, maybe single parents or even people that are care caretakers for their you know their their parents or their family. Uh, that you know their their means are being stretched you know further and further just just because of the way the economy is going and it's like you mentioned it's not because they're they're poor it's just they're just trying to make ends meet you know yes exactly so how do our listeners get involved if if they want to want to help they want to volunteer they want to donate what what's the best ways for for the community to kind of help support what you guys do. Um, food drives absolutely wonderful. If you know, um, we always need food. So anyone can go to the store and get the buy one get ones and donate one of them. Um, we actually think you know if you donate the free one, you're not out anything, and if you donate the one you paid for, then you're actually giving to charity. So I mean, it's as simple as talking to your neighbors and saying, hey, what can we do? I um, said food drives is the biggest thing. Uh, also. We need volunteers. We have a very small staff. We only have uh, five people and one's part time. And all of the work that we do is takes a lot of people. So we get donations in from all of the grocery stores in the area and everything has to be weighed and sorted and ready um, and the shelves stocked so we can get the food out to our clients. Uh, so volunteering is a big thing for us. The easiest way to volunteer is go to our website and um, it will have a link on it where you can click or you can call our or come by and visit. We're very uh, we're very flexible. We have a volunteer coordinator and that's all she does is schedule volunteers and give them the tour and basically sell the whole program. And that's and that's great. Like I said, the, the more awareness you can create out there, the, the more people we can help in the end. And, and that's what it's about. It's about giving back and sharing and helping with the community around us. So I, I guess, you know, you do a lot of work. You do a lot of great work, uh, especially for the community. What do you do outside of work? Oh, me? <laughs> yeah, it says. I read. I read a lot. I like science fiction. It's kind of ex escaping from everything else. And... Um, my husband thinks I read too much, but uh, I read less now. We got a puppy, and that takes up a lot of time. So I'm sure. I'm sure. But, oh, it's got that puppy energy. Oh my gosh, it's something else. Yes. And, uh, that but, is that is great. So, are you from here originally? No, actually, I'm from Chicago, and okay. but I've been down here for 35 years now. Wow. So you've seen a lot of change down here for sure a lot of change and you know we live we live here in the neighborhood and just watching um the evolution of you know the the elderly we were the young people on the block and then <laughs> more families moving in and as things changed we're now the old people on the block kind of interesting you know but we've also found that you know our neighbors they're still the ones struggling so we just spread the word down the block if you need help this is where you can go and that's and that's great because like I said, as the community grows, as Southwest Florida gets bigger, the need for helping and supporting a lot of these families that actually help support the local business, help support the community, need that need that extra help as well, too. So any way that people can contribute and give back is, you know, it is really helping build a stronger community. Right. So so how would our how would our listeners go about getting getting a hold of you guys? Well, like I said, our website, um, it's its our initials, icslee.org, or they can call and uh, phone number 239-267-3510, and they can talk to anybody that answers the phone. We are, like I said, small staff. We all kind of double up on jobs, and you know, we're, we're very, very laid back about it. You want to help for a couple hours a week? Um, you want to just do a one-time job, we're more than happy to have, you know, the extra volunteers. Funding is also good. So if you know people that have a charitable foundation, mention us and, uh, you know, we can use the extra dollars as well. Uh, of course, of course. Yeah. And any any help is appreciated. Like you said, small, small or large. 
Is there any last minute things that you'd like to share with our listeners about uh, interfaith charities? Actually, yes. Um, we have the financial assistance piece and the food pantry for those in our service area. However, we're also a United Way house. And what that means is we host um, other agencies and other programs. So, and these are not confined to where we live. Um, they are for anybody, anywhere that wants to come in. We do a summer lunch program for the neighborhood kids. You know, schools fix the lunches and drop them off here. And then we have kids and their parents in here. We do activities with them. One of our biggest programs is uh, VITA. It's a volunteer income tax assistance. And we will do taxes for um, households that make under 68000 a year. I have trained IRS volunteers. And we, we actually stay open all year. So matter of fact, I have appointments tomorrow for one of my tax repairs. So we don't, we don't close that program. Um, we also have other agencies. Dubin Alzheimer's Center was here uh, with a virtual dementia tour. We had Area Agency on Aging came in and did a Medicare basics class. Uh, no salespeople, no sales pitch. It was just specifically Part A, Part B, you know, Part D, how it all works together, Advantage plans, which is was very interesting. I'm going on Medicare next year. So I thought that was amazingly right. interesting. So um, we're looking for other programs to bring in, like I said, not just for our clients, but for, but for the other people in the community that um, have different types of needs. So um, that's kind of, you know, we're, we've got a second location. We have the food pantry, which is on Rockefeller Circle in San Carlos Park. And we have an outreach center, which is um, right off 41 behind McDonald's, also in San Carlos Park. So two different halves to the program. Very nice. Very nice. Well, Nancy, you are doing a lot of great things for the community and I appreciate what you do. And I'm sure the community appreciates it just as much. But it's been uh, it's been wonderful getting to know you. Thank you very much for joining us today. And we'll uh, we'll see you out in the community here soon. Wonderful. Appreciate what you what you do for the community as well. Yeah. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. You, too. Thank you for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Estero. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to gnpastero.com. That's gnpastero.com. Or call 239-296-2621.